Welcome here to Soul Passages Astrology. I'm your astrologer, Georgia Dempsey, and I'm so glad you stopped by for your March 23rd eclipse report. I know we've had a lot of really big things brewing lately, and hopefully you had a chance to take a look at my March 8th total solar eclipse report. Now we're into the lunar eclipse of March 23rd. Bear in mind, this is a general reading. Um, it's hard to get it exact for everybody because everybody's chart is slightly different. So if you do have a specific question, I would advise you to get an actual chart reading uh, so that you know the information is tailored to your planets, your houses, etc. But here's your general trends forecast for the upcoming eclipse towards the end of March. Leo rising, Saturn is now stirring up your fifth house and you have been learning some lessons regarding how to express yourself in the world. You're learning to be more careful and thoughtful regarding interacting with the others in your life, especially romantic partners and children, both of whom are occupying a lot of your time lately. Responsibilities regarding children may feel burdensome and you could also find yourself struggling how to share on a heartfelt level with your romantic partner, and yet you're meant to do so. Though normally the fifth house is associated with fun and pleasures, and as a Leo you would absolutely love that, Saturn right now is kind of dampening down the lighter side of things for you. You might even feel blocked when it comes to creative self-expression. This is also a good time for you to really work on your health. And I say that because Saturn imposes lessons, burdens, delays, restrictions, and hard work. And when that kind of energy attaches itself to a house normally lit up by the bright Leo sun, health problems regarding the heart or circulation could result. During the lunar eclipse of March 23rd, that Saturn is forming a fulcrum point to your second and eighth house axis. Now the second house uh, refers to all the things that you value in your life. You know, a lot of people think of it as the house of money, but it's really a lot more than that. Uh, it's different for each person. It could be, you know, developing your own unique talents and skills. It could be owning property or land. Um, it could be spending time with family. Um, for some of you, maybe it is money, but each for each one of you, it's really about what it is that's most important to you. And right now, you've got Jupiter and the North Node of the Moon really anchored in your house of values, and they are ready to give you blessings in your life. Since both of these features are retrograde, it's a great time to review your life and be thankful for all of the many things that you have enjoyed. It's a time to feel uh, joyful and abundant, but to do so, you're going to need to accept the lessons that Saturn is currently offering up. And I say that because Saturn is squaring Jupiter, so there are blessings, but there's also lessons that need to be integrated and acted on as well. So you are currently seeing the truth, that's Sagittarius, of your responsibilities, that's Saturn, regarding your lover or children. Do you need to make adjustments to the way you express yourself with them? Um, are you holding back, that's Saturn, saying things that you need to say? Is your value system undergoing some change because of the Saturn square? What can you do to bring more fun into your life while taking care of core responsibilities? These are some of the questions that pop into my mind. And probably into your mind too, since it's your second and eighth house axis that is teeter-tottering on this Saturn fulcrum point. Now the Sabian symbol message for this taskmaster planet is the moment of pause which sustains and precedes change. 
alert readiness to act, or distress at not knowing what lies ahead. Since you could be reevaluating what is important to you right now, that would be the Saturn square Jupiter, you could be at that kind of quiet, contemplative spot that does precede change. If you take the sapien symbol message to heart, and since you're Leo rising, I know you're going to do that, um, you might want to get on the action side of the message. Take the necessary steps you must so the teeter-totter of your life falls in a favorable direction. With 8th house polarity point, where there's so many planets right now residing, I know that there are a lot of uncertainties that 8th house rules big, big, big life issues such as life, birth, death, divorce, illnesses, inheritances, 401ks, other people's money, taxes, as well as the things you do behind closed doors with your lover. It's the most intimate and sometimes scary part of your chart, for it rules transitions and transformations. With Neptune, Chiron, Venus, Ceres, and the south node of the moon all packed into this life-transforming and private part of your chart, it would not be surprising if you didn't feel a little bit scared, and or wounded regarding what is taking place, or maybe just a little bit uncertain. Fortunately, some of these same planets could also be conferring a very loving helping hand. With Venus and Neptune in Pisces in your eighth house, there is a loving selfless presence in your life. This could take the form of a lover, or angels who are calling to you from the woodwork. Sometimes these angels are dear close friends, a purring cat you have been lifelong pals with, or maybe even a healthcare worker who has your spiritual and emotional interests at heart. Ceres is there to encourage you to take care of yourself and those you are closest to, especially on an emotional level. If you are facing a cataclysmic divide in your life, and I say that because that is a house territory, now is the time to get around that Saturn square. Open your heart and say the things you need to share with those who are closest to you. This is not a time to hold back. It is a time to act, for this fulcrum point is eventually going to pass. And it's better to act and, and take care of business than to worry and distress over what's coming next. This could be a perfect time to get more in touch with yourself also as a spiritual person. Sometimes that happens when we face those big life divides. Along with all of the other things mentioned, the eighth house is a very spiritual place. It's a place where the veil between this world and the next becomes very thin and wispy, like a, like a sheer curtain almost. Dreams or visions could reveal important information. Visualization exercises uh, could also prove to be most helpful along a healing journey as well. If you are facing a major life event, I would suggest reading books like Into the Light or other stories on near-death excursions. With Chiron and Pisces, there can be a tendency to feel separated from the divine. Now might be a good time to heal that rift, and near-death books are an amazing way to get a glimpse at the other side. And one of my sisters actually had a near-death experience, and she said that dying was actually the best thing that ever happened in her life. Can you imagine that? According to her, there was so much love on the other side that no matter what befalls you here on earth, all of it will be healed instantly when you show up in heaven. I have to admit that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> and these words were not from a stranger. They were from my sister. So for me, that really packed a lot of weight. Now, partnerships are likely to be important during this upcoming event because the full moon involved in the lunar eclipse is sitting at three degrees of Libra. So this will light up either your value sector or your house of communications, depending upon your birthday. Either way, it's a really good time for you to get in touch with what's most important to you and share that with those you love. 
The message of the moon is similar to that of Saturn. The dawn of a new day reveals everything changed. Periods of silence and darkness can be very transforming, leading to stirring revelations. So whatever is stirring up your life, Leo rising, now is the time to open your heart and share what's inside with those you love. Saturn has been teaching you the way to be more careful when you express yourself so you can apply wisdom regarding sharing your thoughts and feelings with others, but you do need to get that out. Now, for some of you, your life path could be getting reinvigorated because the sun, Mercury, and Uranus, that planet of revelation and stirring things up, is sitting in your ninth house in the fiery sign of Aries. So information, that's Mercury, could be forthcoming that will stir up, always Uranus, the path you choose to take. That's your sun, your vital life energy. Now, some of you could choose to take a trip to broaden your mind. Others may decide to explore the road to God. The ninth house is often called the road to God. This could happen in a traditional sense, or you could be choosing to expand your mind in an alternative fashion, like meditation, kirtan, yoga, or even chanting. The idea is to rocket fuel your journey. That's Aries, always Aries. And to get really excited about planting new seeds for the path that lies ahead. Well, Leah Rising, I wish you the absolute best during this eclipse season. If you would like a reading tailored to your chart, feel free to uh, give me a call. I am running my special till March 1, $50 for a one hour reading contact information is at the front of the video. And no matter what goes down, I wish you the absolute best during this eclipse season. Peace, blessings, and namaste.